Dear students, welcome to another class in visual programming. Today we are going to discuss alarm clock. The alarm clock is your part A program. It's a very very interesting program, very simple coding. Right, first let's see how the program works. I'm going to execute the program. Right. So this is what you see. This is your design for your alarm clock. So what is happening here? You can see the time running. Obviously, we have used the function now. You, I, I hope you remember the date and time function now. Now will give you the current date and time in which we have only used the format for hour, minute, and second. We don't want the date. We only want the time running. Right? So, this is the current time of your system. When I have to set the alarm, I will set the alarm so that at that particular time, when this particular text box is equal to the time which is displayed in the label, then you will get the alarm. So for here, since we don't have any speakers, we will be using a message box. The message box will say beep, 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 right? That is the program. Let me set the alarm now. I'm going to set it for 12, say 1, and let us say 40, right? This is what I have set, 12, 1, 40. I'm going to say set alarm. So I have to click set alarm. Only when I click set alarm, the alarm will be set. Yes, as soon as it is equal to the label. So, what is that we are checking here? We are checking if the contents of the text box is equal to the that of the label. So, when it is current time, you will get a message box. That message box is going to say beep, beep, beep. That's it. The program may look very simple. For writing this program, I have actually used a timer control. So, you have to first understand what a timer control is. See, what you see here is a timer control. It looks like a clock. Right, this is the control I have used. I have actually used two timers. This is timer 1 and this is timer 2. So, one timer I have used so that I will be able to display the time. The current time has to be displayed. What if I do not use the timer? What if I directly display only the time? What happens is when you display the time, only the current time will be visible but it will not change. What has actually happened when we executed the program, you, could have, you would have seen it. When I execute the program, you can see the time is running. Okay, which means I need a timer to do this. Otherwise, there will only be one time text which will be constant, which will not be running with the current time. So, this is going to run with the current clock for which I need a timer. I will tell you what is the use of timer also. So, I have used one timer so that my time keeps changing there. Okay. Also, I have used another timer to check this time. So, I have to check whether this text box time is equal to the current system time. When it is equal, then it has to uh, ring the alarm. That is the program. So, to check that, I am using a timer 2. So, there is timer 1 and there is timer 2. And there, there has to be properties set for these two timers. So we will go to that part little later. Now, let me show. This is how you take a timer and then place it. Okay. So, what is that about timer is you can only see the timer during the uh, say design time. During run time, you will not be able to see those timers. I have three timers, but you are not able to see any of it. Okay. So that is how the timer is. So it is not actually visible. This extra timer I have just uh, kept to show you. There are some properties in the timer which you should know. First is the name property. So it says timer 3. Right. So that is the name of the timer. Okay. So there is a property called enabled. So, enabled has to be true or false depending on whether you wanted to use the timer now or not. If you wanted to use the timer, then you have to keep it true. If you do not want to use the timer, then you have to put it as false. So that is one important property of the timer that you should enable. If you want to keep the clock ticking, then the enable property should be true. Otherwise, if you are not using the timer at that particular time, enable property can be false. That is the one thing which you should know. And the other thing is going to be interval. Interval is going to be is going to tell you time in milliseconds. So, I have to set it to 1000. 1000 if I set here, which means 1 second. Okay, 1000 millisecond is equal to 1 second. So, if I want the program to or this clock to change every second, I want the display clock to change every second. So, I will set my interval to be 1000. So these are the two things which you should remember. You have to set enable and the interval these two properties has to be set right in the timer so interval is nothing but it is going to tell you 
the number of seconds. Thousand means one second. Thousand milliseconds, which means one second. So we are going to set the clock for one second. Why am I going to do that? Because I want the time to change every second. That's why, right? So I wanted to change it every second. Let me just remove it. So let me show you what it is. Here the time. Here whatever you are seeing in the display is actually changing every second. So I have. I have the timer interval to be thousand. Thousand means this will be executed every second. So if the interval is going to be say two thousand, uh, say every two seconds it will be executed and so on. So in this particular program, we are going to keep it as thousand. So every second I want this display to change. Okay. So how I am doing it and what is the actual work of the timer? Let me tell you. Right. For which you should understand. Let's go to one of the timers first. So I am going to talk about say timer. This timer two is what I we are going to now discuss. First, let's take timer two. What I have I checked? I have set the enable property as true. Remember, here I am setting the enable property as true because I want the clock to be in the working mode. Already I want it to work. Okay, so I don't want to change it during run time. In the design time itself, I am enabling it. It is true. That is your timer two. The interval of the timer two is thousand. I have set, which means every second I want the timer to. change so what is the work of the timer is whenever you write the coding for the timer i have to double click the timer and write the coding for the timer what you see here is the coding for the timer timer 2 underscore timer is the uh, event here the timer is the event here timer is the name of the control and the event's name is also timer okay so not that point now right so what i am doing i have to write the coding for this particular timer 2 So what I have done, two properties I have set for the timer. The first property is enable should be true. The second property is nothing but the interval should be thousand. So what is the meaning of it? Is in this particular uh, procedure, what happens in the timer procedure? Timer underscore timer. What happens there is every second. So at the interval, whatever the interval we have given, we have given thousand as the interval, thousand millisecond, which means. Every second, this particular code will be executed. Every second, every second, this particular code will be executed. So first time, it will say label one dot caption is equal to format of now comma hour minute second. Now will give you the current date and time. But I don't want the whole date and time. I only want it in this particular format. So I'm using the format command which we have already studied. Format now is the current date and time. I don't want completely. I want it in the format of hour h h m m s s. That is the format I want it. right so if i say if i don't give this in the timer let us say i'm not going to have a timer instead i'm going to give it outside the timer let us say i'm going to give it outside the timer let us see what is going to happen i'm going to comment it and show you what is the difference between giving it in a timer and not giving it in a timer right let me give it in the form load okay when the form loads i want this particular command to be executed so i am not using any timer i have disabled it let us see what happens Yes, can you see the time is still? Why? Because when the form is loaded, here we say form load, which means as soon as I execute form is loaded, whatever is the current time that is stored inside the label, that's it. It will not change after that. So this is how it is. But we don't want this. We want the current time. We wanted to know the current time so that we can set the timer. So we want it to change. Change how how frequently we wanted to change. We wanted it to change every second. So what are we going to do? We are going to put that coding inside the timer. So we don't want it here. We wanted to put it inside the timer. So I'm going to remove this, right? Instead, I wanted to put it inside timer. What happens? This particular code inside timer will execute every second. Every second, again and again and again, it will say uh, label one dot caption is equal to again next second label one dot caption is equal to. By doing that, what happens? You can see that it is changing. every second the time is go system time is going to change so every time it changes it is giving you that current time so what happens it looks like the clock is running for us our uh, view is like this for us it looks like the clock is running see every time the same code is going to be executed this code which is there in timer 2 is going to be executed every time which means you are able to see that happening right so you can see that it is changing why because this particular code timer 2 underscore timer it is going to keep executing every second every second we are executing it why every second because our interval we have given it as 1000 you are giving it as 500 then 1/2th of the second okay every half a second you will see the uh, clock changing right 
so that now you can see that the clock is like it is running this is the use of timer okay the same timer we are also going to use for another purpose so we are going to use for another purpose the same timer say for example i have taken timer 1 and i am using that to set the alarm okay set the alarm is a command button which is going to actually trigger the timer for me so what i am doing it i want, don't want the timer to be running already I only want the timer to run when I click on this button set alarm. So what I will do, I will set two properties, I will set enable as false because I don't want it now. I want that to be active only when I click set alarm. Until then I don't want it to be running. right? And interval as usual I want it every second. Every second it has to do the checking. right? So what is that I am doing with timer 1? Is timer 1 I am going to use it for setting the alarm. Timer 2, we already saw it is going to be used for this particular label to keep changing the time. Timer 1, I am going to use for setting the alarm purpose. Okay, let us go and check what is the code written in the set alarm. The set alarm is here. This is command 1 underscore click. So, what happens in command 1 underscore click is I am going to only do one thing that I am enabling it. As soon as I click the command button, this timer will start ticking, will start executing. Until then, it will not execute. Okay, so let me show you what is happening. So there is a time running. I have to set my alarm. So I will set something uh, say 45 and only if I click this set alarm, this alarm actually will set. Otherwise it will not set. I have just clicked the alarm. Only then you are getting that beep at 45. If I don't set it, you will not get any beep. Okay, same thing. Let us try again. Let me not click. Let us say I am setting the alarm, but I am not going to click that set alarm button what happens in that case let's see i said 59 59 is passed but nothing has happened because i have not clicked this only if i click it that particular timer will start working right so what i'm doing as soon as i click that button my timer one dot enable should become true okay i'm making the timer dot enable true during the runtime when is that happening only when i click that particular button okay yes so what should happen inside that timer so what is the coding for the timer i'm going to see the coding double click the timer and see the coding what is that i have written so I, as i told you timer this particular procedure will be executed every second this every second it will start executing from start from dim and keep executing every second this one is going to execute what is that it is going to check every second every second it is going to see whether the time which we had it is going to check whether the time which is there in this label is equal to the time which is here in this text box. So as soon as it is equal, it is going to say beep, beep, beep. If it is not equal, it will keep again and again, it will keep executing the code. Okay, This particular code will be repeated again and again until the text matches. Text in the text box matches with the text in the label. Right? So how am I doing it? Let us see. So I am going to have a string variable. Two string variables are there. One string variable is alarm time the other string variable i have is time now right what is the alarm time alarm time is what i give in the text box what is the time i'm setting the alarm to that will be in my text one dot text time now is nothing but whatever time is there in that label that label time keeps changing so at that current time whatever is there in the label that will be stored in time now okay so there are two times one is the alarm time which i have set the other one is the system time which says time now I am going to use a if condition and say time now is equal to alarm time. So I have to check whether both are equal. Once they are equal, you have to give beep beep. Okay. But I am doing it in the other way around. What I am saying, if time now and alarm time are not equal, okay, this symbol less than greater than means not equal to. In VB, it is not equal to. We don't use a exclamation mark. It is going to be not equal to. And time now is not equal to the alarm time. Exit. Exit this whole what subroutine exit the whole subroutine otherwise which means if it is equal then message box of beep 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 okay the message box of beep 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 so you are going to say once that is done once your beep 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 is done you just come out of the loop end end f okay end sub is going to be the end of the subroutine so we are going to only check if at all it is not equal then you keep doing it you exit so every second it will keep exe executing it will check whether it is not equal it is not equal it will come out of the loop if it is equal then it will do the message box and then end okay, otherwise the, the clock will keep ticking so you don't want that to happen so once you give the message box you end 
okay anyways you end the whole procedure how are you going to end if it is not equal immediately you will end if it is equal you give a beep beep message and then end the procedure okay it's a very very simple code we are just going to check if the text box contents is equal to the label content the, the second it is equal that time we are going to give a beep message so message box we have already used beep 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 is the message i'm giving you also can use sounds in case you have speakers but since in the lab we don't use it or we go with beep 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 message box only for the exam point of view right so hope you understand what we have done now so let me again show you what is happening so before that let me put a, a beep here i'm going to put a break there let us see what is happening a break point has been set the time is here i'm going to give you but be careful you have to use the same format colon semicolon all that is very important because we are only checking based on that so this text should match right so i'm going to say 16 let us say 10 okay and i have to press set alarm only then now the timer one is working as soon as it is equal it has given me beep now if you check this time is equal to this time yes and as soon as this time is equal to this time which means it is giving message box of beep 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 after which the program has to end so now it is not ended it is still there you can see that it is still there it is given the message box but it is still there so you don't want it to be still there you have wanted to as soon as you see the message box you wanted to end the code right so that's what we will be doing we are going to go past it beep 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 has come yes as soon as i click on ok message box ok it is ending okay so the program comes out of the whole design so you are coming out of the application okay, very very simple but interesting program right so one thing you have to remember about timer is that it has two properties one property is enable property the other property is the interval property enable property you will set it to when you want the clock to be ticking interval is going to tell you how many seconds okay in how many seconds you want the procedure to be repeated so what happens this timer procedure will be repeated again and again what in what frequency you want it to be repeated is what you are going to say using interval if i say my interval is uh, thousand which means i am saying i want to repeat this code every second okay this is your part a program alarm clock program this alarm clock program sometimes also has been asked in theory they sometimes ask you to write the alarm clock program or usually it is explain timer with example so even for explaining timer with example you can use this program okay hope you have understood it thank you